So today we're going to be talking about the options and check sequence. <clears throat> and there are three parts to this program called check sequence. And to help you decide which option to use, I have a little rundown here. So option one allows you to resequence check numbers, but please take note, this will leave a gap in check numbers. <clears throat> option two will help you to regenerate the form text file for checks already created and posted. This text file can be generated for both warrant and refund checks, but obviously no memo checks because we're not printing those. In option three, this includes both a plain resequence, so leaving the old check number unused, and it makes the old check number on file as a voided check and will just resequence the, the new check numbers. So why would we use check sequence? Well, what option one does is it will change a series of check numbers on the computer system to reflect the actual physical check forms on which they were printed. So maybe a wrong check number was entered on the system and it doesn't match the physical check which was already printed. Um, you would use option one. In option two, the system will regenerate the forms text file for a series of checks that were not printed or had been generated with an incorrect check number. This option is also to be used for refund checks generated from USAS Web Refund Program. And let's say you have a printer jam. In option three, this will void the check numbers and resequence them to new numbers and regenerate the forms text file for a portion of a run of checks that were printed but destroyed and unable to be used. The following types of checks cannot be resequenced. This would be a late distribution payroll check, although this can be resequenced after posting an auto post. And another type of check that cannot be resequenced is a reconciled check or a check that has already cleared the bank. And now I want to take you into Reflections to show you a few examples of check sequence. So at the menu prompt, you would type CHKSEQ, and it'll ask you if you have the correct program. You can say yes. And what I want to do is change check numbers. So I had a series of numbers, 78762, 78763, 64, and 65. But on 78762, I accidentally typed 78752. So what we're going to do is go in and change that check number. So by choosing option one, and then you put in your full name and your district name, and the reason why you're changing check numbers, It says enter the numbers that you wish to change. So I wish to change 78752. And since this is the only check number that I'm going to be changing, you would enter the same number for the first number and the last number. And this is the new check number. So I wanted it to be 78762. And it's asking me, is this correct? I'm going to say yes. And you notice that a output report was created and it did change my check number. So let's go into that text file and see what was actually changed. So we're going to menu view. And you'll see it gives the date and time. It'll tell what the old check number was, 078752, and I meant for it to be this new check number, 78762. That's the correct amount. It's an outstanding check status, and it gives the reason why and my name. So then I can put this with uh, the documentation for the reasons why that check number was changed. Now we can go into option two and actually print that check that, um, that we're correcting. 
So I'm going to choose Option 2 to generate the check forms file for printing. It says enter the check stub specifications. Do you want to print item description or do not print item description in, in Selection 1 and Selection 2 is print item description. I'm just going to say 2. Do you want to print the written amount of the check? I sure do. Enter a comment on the line, or you can leave that blank. I'm just going to leave it blank. And so we're going to print check 78762. And that's the only one that I need to print because that was the one that I mistakenly did. And you'll notice it gives you another output file, two of them. There's the DAT file that we can transfer to Edge or the third-party software to print that check. And here is my other output text file. Okay, and so for our last example in option three, um, say I had a printer jam and my check number 78711 was destroyed. So I had check 78711, 78712, and 78713. So I want to void those checks and resequence them now into new numbers because my printer ate one of my checks. So we're going to go back to check sequence, and we're going to choose option three. Well, it says, is this the correct program? Yes. And then we're going to choose option three. And I'll enter my name once again and my district. And the reason, I'll just say that it was a printer jam. And we're going to resequence 78711 through 78713 Oops. to new check numbers. So this says, enter the check number you wish to change. 78711 is the first one. My last check number in that series was 78713. And enter the new first check number. And it's saying, there's my new check number, 7. 8770. The number of checks to change is 3, so it's 70, 71, and 72. Is this correct? We're going to say yes. And it's giving me a warning that it's from a previous month. Do you still want to void and resequence the checks? I sure do. And you'll notice that I get another output file. So we can exit the program now and take a look at that. The number of records changed was three, so we'll take a look at those three changes. So here it shows once again my old check numbers, 711, 712, and 713 were renamed or renumbered to 7, 8, 7, 70, 71, and 72. And it gives my reason why we had a printer jam and we're resequencing 78711 through 78713 to new check numbers. And there's my new check numbers. And that is it for check sequence.